let's be real right now. The uh, future of art is going to be pretty much an online space sooner or later. And uh, what the pandemic has kind of showed us is that more and more people are going to focus on learning online instead of in a traditional classroom. And so I wanted to make it so that the information you get on this channel is something that you can use for when you learn you know, how to sell and how to market yourself. Uh, one of the things that I wish I had learned uh, when I went to art school and uh, high school, because I went to a high school that was also an art school, um, is the marketing side of things and being able to sell and being able to make, you know, some sort of decisions uh, business-wise. So one of the biggest things that you have to look at when someone is hiring you for a commission is to make sure you cover yourself. What I mean by that is if it's something where you're working on somebody else's IP, make sure that whatever you come up with, uh, you can actually get credit for um, anything that they create. Obviously, it's their creation, but sometimes when you work with someone and you're creating something together, you can come up with some ideas and you don't want to lose out on uh, any sort of credits or um, you know any any sort of credits and, and compensation that's due to you so um, you don't want to miss out on that uh, another thing you want to look at is uh, making sure that everything is in writing even if it's an email uh, text message uh, just make sure everything is in writing so that you don't you kind of cover yourself and down the line if you need to take it to a small claims court um, or if you need to get you know your due uh, it's written down so uh, those are the two really important things the other thing is also making sure that you're not underselling yourself um, I always try to over deliver uh, but I try to keep it at a fair rate uh, personally I don't like doing small commissions uh, I prefer to do like bigger projects, but with that, it, the turnover, you know, the, the time waiting for the pay, like I was going to do a card game. The problem with that is there's so many moving parts with the card game and so many setbacks and, you know, you might get a deposit, but you won't get the final pay until the very end. And sometimes a project like that, you might get a back end deal where you get paid on you know if the game actually gets created and sales so th those long-term commissions can be a struggle uh, but even short-term commissions I don't prefer them but if you have to do them especially starting out um, it's good to get your feet wet and, you know get your name out there is to make sure that you're not under undercharging so let's say you got a really good rate but you, it, it's you're taking on too much and you're getting too little you might love drawing but you're gonna hate it if you have to draw the same thing over and over and over and you're getting the minimum you are probably better off getting a job at McDonald's at that point uh, so those those are the things to look out for uh, the other thing is learning how to navigate social media uh, that's still something that I'm learning with because social media let's be real it's still a new uh, it's a new frontier and um, I think the biggest part is actual etiquette on there so you don't want to be one of these artists that are pushing your information on other artists and it's driving you know all these other artists crazy like you know this guy's sending me DMs uh, with links to his YouTube channel and to his artwork um, it's better to, to support them and show them that you're more than just trying to get your name out there but you also want to help other artists and they'll be more likely to help you out um, so making sure that you're not a pest on social media um, and making sure that you're actually helping other artists uh, like what I do on my channel I started helping some of these other artists kind of get their products known on Gumroad and uh, Obviously, some of them are already big, but 
just getting more people to see their their stuff and it kind of a synergy because then people looking for them will find my videos and in turn my videos will lead them back to their brushes and people will get to see an actual the brushes actually being used like in this video where you see me working on the uh, Becky Lynch uh, portrait I'm using a mixture of all the brushes from these artists so it, I'm always promoting what these artists have created and in turn you know it helps me when people look it up my video pops up on Google so um, that's the kind of energy that I think is good etiquette when it comes to social media so as long as you have that good etiquette other artists will be willing to help you willing to give you advice um, and at the same time maybe even share your artwork um, but just going in and just hitting their DMs with a link to your YouTube channel is not the way to do it and uh, I think it's important to navigate it correctly because of, you know other people that are looking at it will see you know that oh you know he's constantly posting but he's not really sharing anything else so um, I like to share uh, Trent, Trent stuff on, on Twitter on Instagram I'm always sharing um, the visual Timmy stuff and Gaius Cruz and um, all these guys have created stuff for Procreate for Sketchbook Pro um, and also giving the artists that are not really established a way to find out more information on products um, it's just a win-win and so I think it's important to learn how to navigate social media now that there's so many social medias to navigate so if you're more of a visual just drawing static pictures Instagram is the way to go because Instagram is static you know you, you they still have the TikTok like um, option but having the ability to do uh, static pictures and just post them link them uh, that always helps out uh, making sure that you are crediting anything you're referencing even if it's another artist's work you know it's you know right after so and so um, I think that social media etiquette will show and will show to other artists and show to people looking up um, so those are some of the big things that I think um, are important especially nowadays is learning how to manage uh, the financial aspect like commissions social media and then the etiquette the etiquette really is um, it's really bothersome to me when I see uh, especially artists who will give you uh, unsolicited critiques on your artwork uh, it's one thing if you're posting something you're saying hey what do you guys think at that point you're opening up the critique but when someone's just giving you a critique unsolicited uh, I think that that's that's bad social media etiquette um, another option for social media is Twitter but Twitter has kind of become a cesspool for negativity and I feel like Instagram is just a lot easier. Um, I don't have Facebook anymore. F Facebook's even worse. Um, but social media is like DeviantArt, uh, ArtStation, uh, YouTube. Even if you don't plan on making a lot of videos on YouTube, just making a YouTube channel and posting here and there, uh, showing your artwork, even if it's just a quick video, taking advantage of the shorts feature. And if you do the shorts feature, you can double up on that and put it on TikTok. So you kind of have win-win and uh, you know art art these days is all about working smarter not harder uh, that's one of the benefits of digital art digital art is all about working smarter not harder before if you wanted to paint a portrait like the one I'm doing here you would add you know gesso uh, uh, frame <laughs> frame your um, your canvas gesso and wait for that to dry then get your paints get all the paint ready and then if you're using oil you gotta have a well ventilated room or paint outside uh, acrylics dry super quick because it's all water based whereas here I'm just using digital you know the only thing I'm wearing out is my uh, arthritis in my hand and the battery in my iPad 
and you get these amazing visuals. The only thing I do miss is when you're working on canvas, you could see the canvas underneath the the piece. Then yeah, that you'd kind of lose that. But um, yeah, me going off on the tangent there. But yeah, the biggest thing uh, uh, I think, especially because you know so many new of the new generation don't want to go to college which is totally all right because you know college isn't for everyone especially with the costs you know what you're getting out of it you can totally watch a video on youtube and get that same information uh and you can draw along and i feel like that some of the the artists on here are way more approachable than a professor would be and i don't mind answering questions on my comment section and and I, I also you know I also understand that I am not the best and if there's something I don't know I always move that question to someone who might know and so I have no problem saying hey I don't really know this let me send you to an artist or a channel that knows more specifically um, one of the channels that I can think of right off, uh, right off the bat is uh, Dan Beerchaw because he does pencil art and uh, I like to draw with pencil but sometimes I'm not completely understanding of all of it you know because I, I, I like pen and ink a lot more I'll direct someone to that channel I think it's important to understand your limitations and understand where to send people I think that's the mark of a good teacher, uh, a teacher that can say, I don't know, let me send you to the right person. Uh, but when you do know, I have no problem giving people the insight and the information that they need. Uh, other than that, I think uh, making sure that you're learning at a good pace and learning stuff that you don't know. Uh, so let's say you're really great at drawing anime. Good. Now learn how to draw real life, or learn how to figure draw, learn how to draw landscapes, learn how to draw animals. Right now I feel like I've, I'm comfortable enough with portraits where I feel like I can step away from portraits and I'm going to start drawing uh, landscapes, because I've always had a weak spot for landscapes. Um, and I think that that's how people should go forward with this new online scape of uh, online learning. So using the tools that you have at your disposal and going online and learning from all these great resources you know you have your ross draws your sam does art your your trents your uh proco proco is huge um and i think uh academy academy arts so all these all these great channels if you don't want to go to college um these are great tools at your disposal, but I always recommend if you are going to watch these channels to follow along. Don't just watch, follow along, sketch, or have your iPad or digital art and follow along. So I hope that this kind of helped uh, for those who are kind of on the fence about you know, going to college. Um, and you're like, wait, I, I feel like I learned way more on YouTube than I would in a college setting. And, uh, those are the things that you have to think about college you're not really going to get the background on starting a business marketing yourself and so those are things you're going to learn just by watching you youtubers who are going through this or learning yourself and if you want to see more stuff where i talk about that that aspect of it i have no problem just leave it in the comments down below i would love to do another video about it um, this is more just kind of scratching the surface um but in college you know it's just going to teach you the basics the fundamentals and then maybe some advanced classes you'll do some of that stuff but um those are the things you don't really learn until you learn it yourself and i always say like in high school they should have taught us how to do our taxes and stuff like that you know the stuff that you learn the hard way and I think it's a great resource now that you have these YouTubers that have gone through this and can teach you these things and, and you can learn these things. Um, I always re recommend uh, Art and Fear. It's a great book that also talks about it. And then Art and Work. Art slash Work. 
So if you're thinking about doing any of these uh, career paths or art paths, um, check out those books and check out the channels that I mentioned. I'll try to link them in the description of the video so you can check them out. Um, I am think I've rambled on enough. Hopefully you enjoy this uh, Becky Lynch uh, time lapse while I was talking. Um, but if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please let me know. Please uh, hit that like button if you could. Uh, it'll help out the channel and help this video get seen. Uh, and if you have any other uh, any other things that you think I missed, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to see uh, if there's any other artists out there who feel the same or disagree wholeheartedly with what I'm saying. Uh, but I do see that the future of art is going to be strictly online. Uh, I see some of these 17, 16 year olds on Instagram who can draw circles around me and you know they've learned strictly from watching other youtubers watching other artists uh, learning online so i do see that the future is online and it's better to foster a better community for art now so that it's stronger later uh, and that's been the goal of my channel since i started it so uh hope you guys have a great rest of your night or day or afternoon and uh thank you for watching and don't forget to always keep it over 9,000. take care